Live from WRAL News Headquarters in Raleigh, your number one source for local news. WRAL News, coverage you can count on. I'm tracking some light rain that's about to push into our viewing area this morning. It's likely to become heavier in the middle of the day. I'll show you what to expect. A shocking scene in an Apex neighborhood. Two women and a dog shot and killed. What we're learning about the man due in court today on murder and animal cruelty charges. The first big win of the 2024 race for the White House goes to Donald Trump. This is the first because the big night is going to be in November. His landslide win in Iowa and how his challengers are planning to move forward to New Hampshire. Winter weather is hitting hard for millions of people across the country. The challenges they're facing to dig out and how it's affecting travel at airports, including RDU. is quite the domino effect. If those planes can't come into RDU, then there's no getting out either. We're tracking that all for you on this Tuesday morning. Thanks for joining us. I'm Renee Chu. And I'm Jeff Hogan. Yeah, thanks for making us part of your Tuesday here. If you're trying to get out this week in particular, we've had a couple of cold days. Kids play, though, compared to what's coming. Elizabeth Gardner in the WRS Severe Weather Center. The real chill's on the way. Yeah, two big Arctic outbreaks. One of those happens tonight into tomorrow, and then the other one happens this weekend. We do have some light precipitation right now, and I know you're looking at that shaded in purple. There's a chance that we could see some extremely light freezing rain with this system, but for the most part, we're not looking at freezing temperatures until you get up to Roxborough or into Mecklenburg County, Virginia. We take a look at Futurecast, and Futurecast is showing that light band of rain uh, and uh, just being rain. We'll continue to see that on and off during the morning. And then it begins to pick up in coverage and intensity right around lunchtime. At that point, temperatures will be in the 40s, so it'll be fairly uncomfortable if you need to run errands or uh, head to a meeting around lunchtime into the early part of the afternoon. It's just going to be really chilly and wet. That moves out by the evening commute. And then behind it, we see bitterly cold air coming in. I wouldn't expect any of that wetness to freeze by the time uh, the temperatures get cold enough. We, sh we should be okay with that. But this this is going to look at our hour by hour rain chances by about 10 or 11 uh, up until about two or three. You're looking at about a 40% chance. It is cloudy this morning, but uh, on the quiet side, 37 is our temperature in the triangle. Looking at 30 in Roxborough, 32 South Hill, but it's 37 in Durham. So I know the radar is showing a little bit of pink back there, but temperatures are above freezing for most of us. This afternoon when it's raining, though, temperatures will be in the upper 40s, which makes it uncomfortable. Brian. 602 right now. Elizabeth, just check with Raleigh 911. We're looking good around Wake County with no crashes showing up. Our major routes are looking good and in Durham we're also looking fine on the Durham Freeway 885 and 147 both looking good in both directions. I want to take you out to the Beltline at the 440 Wake Forest Road interchange. Headlights are westbound and we're not seeing any problems from 87 all the way around to Wade Avenue and that eastbound traffic also looks fine. Brian, thanks. Today, a man arrested in connection with the shooting deaths of two women and a dog in Apex is due in court. WRL's Laura Levine is live in Apex this morning. Laura, this is so disturbing. The killings happened yesterday at a home in a, what's usually a quiet neighborhood. Absolutely, Renee. And this morning, there is a sense of calmness in this Apex neighborhood. Very different scenario compared to what we saw here yesterday and last night. Investigators remained here on the scene throughout the night. But we can tell you, neighbors recall hearing up to eight gunshots. We do know that that suspect, that man who was accused of these shootings and killings, is behind bars this morning. Harry Hardman, take a look at some of this video where you can see when police arrested Hardman. As officers took him into custody uh, from the scene, he is accused of shooting and killing two women and a dog in this Apex neighborhood. Investigators spent hours at Chipping Drive and Brussels Drive. A neighbor who knew one of the victims became uneasy after hearing gunshots from inside her home. I was very concerned when I saw the police at her residence. I could see it from my back window. Hardman faces two counts of murder and one count of animal cruelty. He is expected in court today at 1.30. Laura Levine, WREL News, we're live in Apex. 
Donald Trump has his first win in the 2024 presidential race. His landslide win in Iowa in the caucus is sending a strong message about his firm grip on the Republican Party's nomination. Trump easily outpaced Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, who edged Nikki Haley to finish in second place in the caucus. The result is putting new pressure on DeSantis and Haley ahead of next week's New Hampshire primary as they jockey for position behind Trump. Speaking after his decisive Iowa win, Trump thanked his supporters for cementing his position on top of the polls. We want to thank the great people of Iowa. Thank you. We love you all. What a turnout, what a crowd. And I really think this is time now for everybody, our country, to come together. We want to come together. Initial reports indicate voter turnout was low as Iowa is right in the middle of a bitter cold spell. And in the fallout after the results in Iowa, Vivek Ramaswamy is ending his Republican bid and he's endorsing former President Trump. Ramaswamy finished a distant fourth behind Trump, DeSantis and Haley. He said he called Trump to congratulate him on his victory and he will attend a rally in support of Trump in New Hampshire today. Coming up on today, breaking down the results and looking ahead to New Hampshire. Meet the Press moderator Kristen Welker offers insight and Steve Kornacki goes in depth into the numbers. Today airs at 7 on WRIO. Severe winter weather like we're experiencing across the country is causing a lot of problems for air travel. And that includes at RDU. We are seeing a growing number of delays and cancellations already this morning. WRO's Brett Neese is at the airport this morning for travelers who are keeping a close eye on that flight board like you are. Yeah, Jeff, and we are seeing about 15 cancellations. That's about the same that we saw an hour ago. Just checked again, though. We are up to about 13 delays. And right now, RDU's Terminal 1, not looking as busy as it usually does during the holiday season. But these are cancellations and delays that we're keeping an eye on because of what happened yesterday across the country. Take a look at some of this brand new video into the newsroom of this terminal here at RDU. And yesterday, the country saw 3,700 flights canceled, all because of this winter weather that is spreading across the country. So while we're not seeing that winter weather necessarily here in the triangle, any of that snow, rain, sleet, we are still seeing the effects because of either flights coming in or other airports having to cancel flights that affect flights here. So the main uh, really uh, cautionary tale right now is just continue to check with your airline on where uh, you're flying out of this morning. Uh, to make sure that you're, you know whether or not you are delayed or canceled coming into uh, RDU when you get here. But uh, the good news is only 15 cancellations at this point. We're going to continue to keep an eye on that, though, in case that number does tick up. Michelle McConaughey in the WRL Life Center right now, though, keeping an eye out on uh, the bigger picture. And, Michelle, you have a live look at one of the airports and some of this winter weather. Yeah, Brett, I do. This is Philadelphia International Airport. This is a picture provided by our sister station, WPVI, there. Uh, but you can see the amount of snow on the ground that they have at this airport. Uh, they are seeing some delays right now. According to FlightAware, they're seeing 23 delays and 29 cancellations out of Philadelphia. American Airlines uh, seems to be the most affected. But uh, countrywide, uh, the delays and cancellations in the past hour have kind of stayed the same. Uh, 600 85 delays, which is an improvement uh, from the past couple of days and about 1170 cancellations. Looks like United and Southwest are the two airlines affected the most. Uh, you'll have trouble in Nashville, Houston, Chicago and Denver. Uh, so if you do have a flight today, always a good idea to check it before you head out the door. Tonight's public comment session at the Raleigh City Council is expected to be a lengthy one filled with public comment on the Israel-Hamas war. Last week, a record 240 people were signed up to speak on the conflict before the meeting was postponed because of severe weather. Many are calling for council to pass a resolution supporting one side. The city tells WRL 217 people are signed up for tonight. Mayor Marianne Baldwin says the council will continue to listen to what people have to say on the issue. Six people, including three kids, are hurt after a wrong way crash. Terrible wreck. It happened just before 7 last night on I-95 in Johnston County. This was the scene when the WRL breaking news tracker got there. The wrong way driver in a white pickup collided with a black pickup truck headed south. A witness tells us she helped the family after the crash. Charges are pending for the wrong way driver, and we're working to learn that person's identity. 
Soon, homeowners in Wake County will find out the new value of their property. The county tax administration has been assessing real estate values and will present the 2024 values today. This reevaluation happens every four years and will reflect the county's growth and high demand for housing. Property owners will begin to receive notices next week of the new value of their property. Now, if you disagree with the new assessed value, you can file an appeal form. New tax rates have not yet been set. Leaders will vote on those in June. The family of a Durham woman killed in an apparent murder-suicide is looking for closure. The effort they're making to get her mother into the country from Colombia. In television's best honored at the 75th Emmy Awards, the big winners and memorable moments your friends, family and colleagues will be talking about today. And a little bit of light precipitation showing up as purple. It's not going to be impactful, but I will show you when we're going to see a chilly rain. You'll need your umbrella and a coat coming up. As you get into your car, tune to WRAL News Plus on your radio in Raleigh on 99.3 FM, in Durham 96.5 FM, and everywhere on 101.5 HD3. All right, it is 613. We're taking a live look at radar right now, and there's definitely some pink showing up here. Typically, that means we have a wintry mix. This first round is very light coming through. Um, it is unlikely to cause any problems. You can see that around Graham over toward Hillsboro and Roxboro, and then eventually moving on up into Mecklenburg County, Virginia. Um, it's possible that we would see a very light glaze, but it wouldn't be enough to cause problems on the roads or power outages. Um, but if you do happen to see it, go to WRL.com and search Weather Watchers. Send us a photo of what's happening in your neck of the woods. It's dry in Chapel Hill right now. We take a look at what's happening out there across the viewing area temperature wise. We're mostly above freezing. South Hill sitting at 32, Roxborough at around 30. Elizabeth 613 right now just getting reports of a disabled vehicle in Garner at White Oak Road near 70. Not seeing any delays through that area, but look out for a police response. If you do see those flashing lights, scoot over at least one lane. We're looking good on major routes around the triangle right now. Taking a live look at I-40 at Fayetteville Road in Durham. You can see that the camera looks just a little bit foggy. We have a little fog, but not enough that will really affect your visibility on the roads. About a one minute delay on that eastbound trip on I-40 from 15501 to 885. Renee. Brian, thanks. The family of a beloved Durham real estate agent says they are hurting and they want closure. Hundreds of people turned out Monday night for a vigil to honor the memory of Liliana Concha Perez. She was found shot to death last week inside her office. And family members tell WRL the man found dead of a self-inflicted gunshot wound next to her was her ex-boyfriend. Monday's vigil happened at El Centro headquarters in Raleigh. It was packed with people Concha Perez touched during her time in the Triangle. They remembered her as a difference maker who helped countless Latino immigrants navigate their path to home ownership. She wasn't selling houses or showing people's houses. She was changing people's lives with every opportunity. She was very passionate about helping other people. Family members say their main focus is on getting Concha Perez's mother here from Colombia. They started a petition hoping to expedite the process. You can learn more on WRAL.com. Some big honors for television's best this morning. The 75th Emmy Awards brought stars of the small screen together for the celebration. WRAL's Ken Smith is here with the big winners and some memorable moments as well. Ken. Oh, memorable moments they were. People will be talking about, Jeff, about the memorable moments today, as you mentioned, especially some of the acceptance speeches. Let's get to the big winners, though. The final season of the hit drama Succession took outstanding drama series, including acting honors for stars Kieran Culkin and Sarah Snook. Beef earned Best Limited or Anthology Series, as well as wins for Stephen Yearn and Ali Wong, who became the first woman of Asian descent to win an Emmy for a lead role. And The Bear won for Outstanding Comedy Series, and so did the couple of stars from that show, Jeremy Allen White and Aya Edaberry. Lead actress in a comedy series went to Quinta Munson from Abbott Elementary, who gave quite the emotional acceptance speech. Um, I love making Abbott Elementary so much, and I am so happy to be able to live my dream and act out comedy. And um, I say it every time, but I just love comedy so much that I, I, I am so happy to be able to 
get this. I am not Elton John. I'm not. Among the other celebrations, legendary rocker Elton John is now an EGOT, winning the Emmy for Outstanding Variety Special. And you know, we mentioned those memorable moments. Most notably, the cast reunions of some of our favorite shows from the past, like The Sopranos, celebrating its 25th anniversary. Also, Martin, Ali McBeal, who can forget that dancing doll, right? Of course, more of the memorable moments from the Emmys and What's Trending, coming up in less than 10 minutes. Ken, thanks. Coming right from the Iowa caucus, former President Donald Trump is expected to be in New York for the start of a new civil damages trial. This trial involves Trump's public comments about E. Jean Carroll that he made both while he was president and after the jury's verdict in May. The jury found him liable for sexually abusing and defaming Carroll. Carroll was awarded $5 million in damages. After attending the start of the trial, Trump is set to travel to New Hampshire for a campaign event tonight. There's new video out of Iceland showing a volcano erupting there for a second day. The volcano first erupted in December and then began spewing lava again Sunday. Houses were set on fire in the tiny fishing village of Grindavik, about 30 miles from the capital. The volcano continued to erupt yesterday, but it was a lot less active. So far, no one has been hurt or injured from the eruptions. The people living in Grindavik, though, were ordered to evacuate. Fire and ice in Iceland and snow and ice across much of the country, as well as bitterly cold temperatures that are going to make their way here. Meteorologist Elizabeth Gardner is tracking that system for us. The first thing we'll have to deal with is mostly just some scattered rain with chilly temperatures today. We have a disturbance that's going to be swinging through. It was definitely some snow in the mountains over the weekend. That's starting to push a little farther east. And I know you're looking at that area shaded in purple. So let's zoom in on that a little more closely. And we are seeing here just starting to push into the viewing area some purple uh, shaded precipitation precipitation that tends to mean that it's a wintry mix. In this case, it would likely be some light freezing rain, not enough to cause problems on roads or uh, power outages, but you might see a light glaze um, anywhere north of uh, I-85 heading up toward Virginia. Let's zoom in a little more closely and north of Hillsboro, it's a little patchy getting into Roxboro. We're going to pull up the Roxboro camera uh, coming up in just a minute or two. Um, that would be a more likely scene. Probably what's happening right now is this is moving in and it's a very dry air mass, so most of this is evaporating but eventually it may be heavy enough to produce just a, a very brief uh, uh, bit of freezing rain. Starting to move into Clarksville, Virginia. We're going to see that in Mecklenburg County, Virginia as well. Here's a live look at Roxboro. The visibility in Roxboro is down to a mile right now with a little bit of fog, but nothing is falling. You can see the streets right now there are, on, are dry. We'll continue to see that little band slipping through. Another round at 8 o'clock when temperatures will be a little bit warmer. And then the most uncomfortable part of the day is going to be right around lunchtime where we have rain moving across the viewing area with temperatures in the low to mid 40s. So keep that in mind. If you have plans to be out around lunchtime, uh, you're going to need something to keep you warm and dry. It's out of here by the evening commute, and then the cold air comes blasting into our area. Tomorrow morning, this is what kids are going to run into as they head out the door. 5 a.m., 21, feeling like 14. At 7 a.m., it'll feel like 13. At 9 o'clock, 17. And at 1 o'clock, it'll feel like 29 degrees. So it's going to be a very cold day tomorrow. You can see all this cold air diving in. Um, at 11 p.m. tonight, the temperatures will feel like teens with the wind chill. We're going to feel very chilly uh, again as we get into the weekend. We'll push it ahead and watch all that cold air diving in. We're looking at uh, Saturday morning with a wind chill of around 10. So very cold temperatures coming again. Sunday morning, 13 will be the potential wind chill. So cold, cold air coming our way. Um, some snow continuing to push up into New England. Uh, there are some airport delays at RDU right now. Michelle McConaughey has been talking about those. And we'll continue to see that potential. We're going to be watching a system that drives across the country that brings us a chance of some showers on Friday. This is a look at Friday at lunchtime and we'll be seeing that sweeping through with some just light rainfall and then behind that that's when we get that push of some colder air for the weekend. So um, today 48 with rain mainly around the middle of the day uh, sunny but very cold on Wednesday and then a chance of some light rain Friday and then highs only in the 30s this weekend. Brian. All right it is 621 right now. We do have that disabled vehicle still in Garner at White Oak Road near the 70 the intersection there, not too far from I-40. Sensors on this map are looking fine. I looked at some other sensor data and it looks like traffic's flowing pretty well. Still, you could see some flashing lights and a reminder with North Carolina's move over law, you need to scoot over at least one lane. We're looking quiet in Durham right now. And as we check those major approaches into Raleigh, they're all looking good. We're out of Nightdale, southbound 87, just a one minute delay from 64 business back to the 440 interchange. 
Thanks, Brian. Volunteers from here in the Triangle are making their way to Israel to help as the war there rages on. The work one group is doing there to help keep the fruit crop bountiful. And a former Carolina Panthers quarterback is leading his team forward in the NFL playoffs. The big win that has Baker Mayfield and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers moving on. This What's Trending report, sponsored by Rug and Home. A Saturday Night Live reunion delighted viewers of this year's Emmy Awards. Super fun. Brian Schrader <laughs> here now with What's Trending. It was the night of reunions at the yeah. Emmys. Yeah, Amy Poehler and Tina Fey presented the award for Outstanding Live Variety Special in a way that SNL fans loved. Good evening. I'm Amy Poehler. I'm Tina Fey. And we've reached the stage in life where we'll only present awards sitting down. <laughs> they sat behind the Weekend Update desk that they shared on SNL nearly 20 years ago as they announced the nominees and opened the winner's envelope. <laughs> yeah, not only did they announce the nominees, they roasted each nominee. Again, this was for a live variety special, so they had a joke about Chris Rock special, <laughs> Academy Awards, uh, the Super Bowl halftime show featuring Rihanna, which Tina Fey said the concert was so good it made us all pregnant. <laughs> 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 that was, I mean, hands down. That's just too good. Oh, it's good to see the two of them the together. Emmy. Love their humor, love their friendship. But wait, there's more. Another big reunion of the Emmy Awards. The cast of Cheers, one of my all-time favorites. Ted Danson, Rhea Perlman, Kelsey Grammer, John Ratzenberger, George Went, all up there at the bar to present an award. There were other reunions throughout the night, including the casts of Grey's Anatomy and Martin. Look at that, Nami! Take your seats right there at the end of the bar. That, the SNL set, the Cheers set. I mean, they did it right. Had these, and they just proof everybody still knows their names. Yeah, right? It just makes us all old that we do know their names. Rhea Perlman's 75 now. They, they look the yeah, same. Yeah, they, they look, look really they, good. They look great. It's super fun to see it come off that way. Fans, I mean, this is long overdue, right? Mm -hmm. Brian, thank you. We have much more news to come. More than 200 people are scheduled to speak at tonight's Raleigh City Council meeting about the Israel-Hamas war. Coming up, what they're demanding and the city's response. And taking a look at radar, we're watching some purple showing up. I'll show you uh, why we don't think it's going to be a big deal, but when you will see some cold rain today coming up. Yeah, that blast of Arctic weather as people digging out all across the country. The heavy snow and extreme cold is making it too dangerous for millions of people to go outside.